gonna try and make this video shorter because every time I do this, I get interrupted by my kid, which I don't really care. She's adorable. Um, I'm gonna summarize this way quicker than I tried. This is my third time trying to record the video. First attempt got screwed up. I didn't like the second attempt because it was really long and drawn out. So a uh, little nitpick and then something that I think is overdone in the firearms community. We're gonna get right into it. So I highly advocate for training for firearms. I believe you should know how to shoot a weapon. You should know how to clear jams. You should know how to put on attachments if need be. You should know how to clean the gun. That's important. You should know what rounds go into the gun. That's obviously important. Um, you should know how to uh, acquire your acquire your target real quick. Um, shoot grouping should be fine. Um, you should know how to. You should know the ins and out of your firearm. When you buy a firearm, you should know ins and out of that firearm. Look up videos. Look up um, online manuals of that firearm. Learn it. Um, and then when you get to firing it, you should train if you're wanting to with firearms to get a real tight grouping to make sure your sights are aligned properly and you're shooting at the right place and you acquire your target quickly and effectively. So that's important. I believe training in uh, for war, whether you're in the military, you're going to war, um, you're infantry or you're some sort of, you're in some sort of specialized unit in the military. Obviously firearms training is obviously important. We wage war with guns. You know, it's in, we're not waging it, waging it with anything primitive. So that's important. Law enforcement, we're trained to shoot in very extreme rare cases where we're gonna have to draw our firearm, that's important. Civilians, training for home protection, um, defense of your family and self-protection, so you're protecting your family, yourself, your home, um, and you conceal carry and open carry, so in the event someone's trying to do harm to where you're at, you're having dinner with your girlfriend, you're at a store, you can draw your firearm and act accordingly if you need to. So I highly advocate for training. You need to, if you're, if you're carrying a firearm for any of those reasons, for protecting your family, yourself, your home, or concealed or open carrying outside of your home so you can protect others if need be. Yes, I highly advocate for firearm training. But if you're buying firearms to look cool and you're buying firearms and you're not training for any of those reasons, you shouldn't have a gun in the first place. Guns really aren't something that you should show off to look like John Wick or some sort of some sort of soldier, someone in the military, just because you want to. Now that's not, that kind of ties in loosely to my main point of the video. And the main argument is, um, I believe you really can't overtrain with firearms, but the, there comes a point where training past what you already know is just a bit too much. What do I mean by that? A lot of YouTubers, a lot of people in the firearms community swear by, you need to train like this. You need to have a grouping of two inches or an inch. You need to acquire your target in like 0.2 seconds. You need to be able to shoot targets all over the place and flip, 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 flop all over the place and hit that target, hit that target, hit that target. You need to learn how to do a tactical reload for some reason. You need to learn how to, okay, you're, you're out, tactical reload, or you're halfway out, whatever, tactical reload, drop your firearm, draw your handgun, shoot, shoot, blah, blah, blah. The problem I see with that is that there comes a point when you actually have to apply that stuff. You're in a very rare case where you're outside doing whatever, you're at a store with your girlfriend, someone tries to get, someone comes in and they're wanting to do harm, they're wanting to rob the place you're at, they're wanting to kill people, hurt people, and they're a shooter, and you got the gun next to you, you got it on your hip, and now you have to act. Why is the, not over training, but why is the pushing really hard to train like this, this, and this too much? Is because when you're in that situation, you actually have to kill someone for real, your body enters either flight or fight. So you've heard that. That's a, I know everyone's heard that. Flight or fight response. So flight, you want to run, you want to get out of there. Your, your body wants to freeze and you forget everything. Fight, you draw your handgun, and you try to kill the person. So it is true that there may be a chance that all that training that you did, that you trained so hard for to be a really good shooter, goes out the window because your body shuts down because adrenaline rushes through you and your skin's on fire because there's so much adrenaline, your heart is pounding, it feels like it, feels like it went in your stomach, you're, you're, you're shaking, and then you just forget the most basic things that you practice thousands of, hundreds of thousands of time on your own range, at someone else's range, at the, in an indoor gun range. All that goes out the window and then you're dead. I highly advocate for training with firearms, again, because if you're buying a firearm for protection, you need to learn how to use it. You need to learn how to clear jams. You need to learn how to clean the gun. You need to learn how to use it effectively and hit the target. That's important. But when you're actually in a really rare instance where you have to act or someone's shooting at you and you got to shoot back, it's not like you're, you're, you're going to run through all the fundamentals in your mind. That should be, it should be, um, 
Uh, that should be muscle memory. But then you have to worry about your body shutting down. You have to worry about, okay, I just got to kill this person. I'm not going to worry about lining my sights up. I know I'm aiming in the general direction of him. I know there's nobody behind that person that I'm trying to kill, and I'm shooting. <clears throat> but it, you're, the training that isn't going to apply is I'm, a tar I'm, I'm, a, I'm uh, acquiring his midpoint of his body. I'm making sure that my, fing my trigger finger is only on the wall of the trigger. I guarantee you, if you're ever in one of those situations, you're just drawing out your handgun, you're obviously lining your sights up, and you're just squeezing the trigger, it doesn't even matter. Right? Obviously, it matters where you're aiming because you don't want to kill anyone, but this sort of almost overtraining, again, I don't really want to call it overtraining, but I have no better words at the moment, lack of a better term, overtraining to where you're, you're training like military to where those people actually need it, it's a bit too much if you're just a civvy. If you're an officer, if you're someone in law enforcement, you're in some sort of specialized unit like SWAT, or you're in the military where you're engaging people day by day if you're infantry in a third world country that is absolutely important but when you're a civilian you, you train like that if you want because I mean, you might get there might be civil unrest or something that occurs where you have to act like that and that's i'm not saying it's wrong i'm just saying that too many people push the idea of you need to train like this and you need to have a grouping like this and you need to learn how to tactical reload and you need to learn how to do this and sprint with your gun 100 yards and then acquire your sight when you're out of breath Acquire your target. That stuff is important, and I do advocate for training that. The more training you have, the better, but there comes a point when you got to do that for real, and then you're screwed because your body's going to shut down. Even then, if your body doesn't shut down and you're engaging that target, it's still you're still pumped full. You're not going to be shooting at someone trying to kill someone and be fine. You're not going to be calm. Your nerves are going to be rattled all the hell. It is going to be the worst time of your life for those three seconds that it happens. Um... So I do advocate for gun training. Again, you've got to learn your firearm if you're buying a firearm of any caliber, any type, any shape. I don't care if it's a 22 to a, a 50 AE. Um, you know, you, you've got to learn your gun and your firearm. That's important. There's That's the main point of the video. Now, the nitpick, um, you can do this. I love doing it myself, but it's just a little nitpicky thing. A lot of people in the firearms community and YouTubers like to dress up as if they're military or law enforcement and practice with plate carriers and night vision and a helmet, a uh, Kevlar helmet, uh, cargo pants with knee pads, and, and that, that's fun. I would love to do that. I'm just saying that if you're not an officer, you're not in the military, that's not really necessary. And that's just a nitpick. Do it if you want. I'm just saying that there are some things that people do that's a bit too much, and that's kind of the overall theme of the video, is training beyond a point that you really need, and then you apply it to actually shooting at someone, but then it's over in three seconds and you, you forget because you, you went into shock or you froze up. I mean, that happens. I'm just saying that you don't have to train how every single person trains to where they are like just pro shooters. They, they can enter a competition, a firearm competition, and gold medal because they're so amazing. Train to protect your family, yourself, and your home, but you don't have to push yourself to the point where you're shooting like some spec ops or, or some Navy SEAL or Green Beret. That's it.